Hey everybody, this is Rusty again with Collector Auctions, and I have got yet another CGC unboxing for you. Now, these orders have been coming in fast and furious. Uh, I can, I'm literally shooting these things and having to hold on to them because I've already got other shows that already have other CGC unboxings. CGC has been getting through these super fast, let me tell you. This order right here, it's a pre-screen 9.6 pre-screen order, modern order. It, 25 books, sent this out May 16th, and literally today, uh, as of filming, is July 1st. I mean, a month and a half. I mean, wow, they are really getting through these. That part's good, but if you watch the videos just prior to this, you know that I'm having some issues with them, and I think what it is is they've got, they're rushing through on some of these orders, and I think you've got graders that may or may not be as trained as you would like. I'm not sure. Maybe they're overtrained and they're being highly critical. I don't know because watch my last two videos on CGC unboxings. Literally a 9.4 pre screen on both of them. And the first order was absolutely fantastic. 22 out of 25 books came back graded. Only two of them were 9.4s. The rest of them split in half pretty much. 9.6s, 9.8s, just absolutely fantastic. And then the exact next order, same thing. It was the same type of books, too. And 9.6, or excuse me, 9.4 pre screen. And it, I was lucky to get 9.4s on what I got. I mean, not everything got graded. It was more like 15 books. And it was mostly 9.4s. A few 9.6s. I think I got a couple of 9.8s out of it, but it was just a very disappointing order. And you could see the stark difference between those books that I pressed and cleaned at the exact same time. They went in. Uh, one order was about a week ahead of the other order, but it was the same in the same batch of books. I mean, the same era of books. Uh, late Copper Age, uh, excuse me, late Bronze Age, early Copper Age type books. 80s books for the most part. But Anyway, this order, let's go to let's go into this order right here. This order right here, as I said, is a 9.6 pre screen. And I'm gonna it's a little light, so I'm gonna kind of set this up a little bit because I'm I looked at my list. I've got my list right here. And there's definitely some shots on goal in this. I know that some of these were not going to probably make it, but it was worth the shot. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with not getting things graded. You know how I feel about pre-screens. I think it helps protect you. And I certainly don't want these graded lower because then the value of a book that's graded lower than these 9.6s just really isn't even worth getting graded at that point. Better off just keeping it raw. But if I'm hopefully hopeful that we're not going to get 9.6s out of this. I'm hoping we get a few 9.8s out of this and we have a have a nice order. We're going to find out. I've got this trusty orange knife right here. Let's just get into it. And I'm sorry, I've got this. I actually picked this up. This was my, was my place setter. I set this here so I could focus the camera, but I just picked this up the other day from Heritage Auctions. Um, it's a nice book to have, right? So let's put that aside. Sorry about that. Usually I clean out my props before I start the show. All right, guys, let's get into it. Now, I have not looked at the grades. I've been real good about that lately, is not looking at the grades, just looking at the shipping times, when they're coming back. And when I open this, you guys are going to see my reaction because I haven't seen these books. I don't know what the grades are. Let me just glance down. Okay, looks like the box is backwards, so we should be able to pull them out one at a time without me peeking ahead of time. Got some... Too much bubble wrap, so yeah, it's a good, it's going to be a pretty limited order. As I said, there were some books in here that I'm pretty sure wasn't going to make it, but hey, let's just get into it and we'll follow up and we'll talk about it afterwards. Okay, first book in the order is Fantastic Four 276, and this is a Mephisto issue. I think you see him at the end on the issue here. Wonderful John Byrne artwork. I Never thought this book had any real spec, but I recently saw 9.8s go on Heritage Auctions for hundreds of dollars. And I'm kind of thinking, like, was it because of Mephisto? 
there really wasn't anything. There's no real, not a significant first appearance, I don't think. I mean, I don't know. But it's one of those I figured, okay, if I can get a 9-8 on this, maybe it'll be worth a little bit of money. I mean, this, this is just me speculating, seeing how the market's reacting to some books, and I'm following up on that. So let's see how we did on the first book here. 9-6. Okay. Hey, what did I say? 9-6 is on these. And these Fantastic Fours are a little old. These are A lot of these are going to be PC books. I didn't go out and pick these up. These are coming right from my collection. And as I said, I think these should have met, I think, been on the verge of 9-8s. We'll see how we do through the rest of the order here. But a 9-6 on that is very good, actually. All right. And as I said, I don't know how many I got on copies. I've got multiple copies on some of these books, so we'll just see. Oh, okay, this got graded. I was speculating on what didn't get graded. Uh, as you can see, this is Nexus number one, Steve, Steve Rude, uh, Mike Barron, and just love the series. Steve Rude, the Nexus books back in the 80s during college was one of my go-to books. I absolutely love that. I love meeting Steve Rude at Baltimore Comic Con years ago. And I was talking to him about what an influence he was for me back in college. The way he would draw and, and construct the page, his sequential art. And just, I love the way he drew. And it's so simple, yet it, he really can convey a story really easy. But um, I threw this in. My guess this was, if it was going to get great, it wasn't going to get a 9.8. I figured this was going to be a 9.6 all day long. So let's see how we did. Yep, there we go. I mean, this right here, I don't know if this is my original copy or, yeah, I don't have it on the list exactly which where these came from. I know that some of these I picked up new, some of them I picked were from PC. I think this was from one I picked up at a recent Comic-Con, so I don't think I paid too much for that. But a 9.6 on that is actually pretty good. 9.8 would have been better now, wouldn't it? But I am speculating, because my wife called me when I got the order in today. It was after I'd already left for work. And I, she said, she got it in here before the storms hit. And I said, how much did it weigh? And she goes, I don't want to tell you. I want you to have a good day at work. And I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. And she goes, okay, it was like 17, not quite 18 pounds. And I'm like, okay, I've been doing these long enough. I know just approximately about how many books that can be. And that's fine because, as I said, I don't want it graded if it falls below what you know, if it's if it falls below and it's not worth it, I don't want to create it. All right, now, no, what I was going to say was I had, uh, I was picking. It's like I figured there was going to be eight to ten books that weren't going to get graded, give or take. And I thought, okay, which ones are not going to get graded? And I immediately went to the ones that had were the oldest in the collection. I thought that Nexus book, I thought this Aliens book from Dark Horse, this is volume two, issue number one. I thought both of those would be ones that would fall off the list. So let's see what we did on Aliens number one here. All right, 9-6, 9-6. Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, that pressed out really nice. And again, I don't know. There's a little bit of, I wouldn't say spec, but this is a desirable issue for Aliens. Looks real nice. Hopefully we'll get a 9-8 out of one of these at least. All right, continuing on. Okay, now this is definitely a PC book. I don't have any other copies of this. I have not bought one since this is part of my original collection of New Teen Titans issues. This is issue number 23, the first appearance of Blackfire, Starfire's sister. Again, George Perez artwork, Marv Wolfman writing. First appearance. I think this is also the first appearance of Adrian Chase, the, um, uh, the, vi the vigilante. So let's see what we did on that. 9-6. You know, I can hope, but I gotta say, that's actually really good considering this was, these are reading copies. I didn't buy these to collect. I bought these because I was a fan of the artwork and a fan of the of reading the stories and everything. So these books got read multiple times. So to get a 9-6 on a book from, what is this, 1982, that's actually, to me, it's still pretty good. All right, guys. Let's continue on. Let's see what else we've got in the box here. I'm not even referencing the book, I'm the, my list. I kind of looked at it earlier today to see what was there, as I said, but I didn't go back. I'm not looking at it now, so I'm kind of 
kind of forgot what all was in the box. All right. We got Alpha Flight number 33. Again, a book I had in my collection. I believe this is the first appearance of Lady Deathstrike. You've got the Mike Magnola artwork here. I think this was right after that he and John Byrne basically switched uh, books. I think, you know, he, I, am I right? Byrne went to the Hulk and Magnola came over to Alpha Flight. I, I don't know. I'm sure there's a story about that. But uh, key first, first appearance here. Let's see how we did it on this one. Again, I don't know if this is my PC copy or a copy I bought because I know I bought at least one, maybe two of these um, in the last few months. 9-8. Ooh, yeah, there we go. So we finally got a 9-8. Awesome. That is awesome. Awesome key first appearance there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like I said, I don't have the values in front of me. I want to say a 9-6 was, it was an okay value. Well, as all of these, 9-6s are okay values. I This is what I value this order at. 9-8s are just so much better, though, because they're worth a lot more. There you go. <laughs> just to be honest with you, right? All right. I know that's right. We got, I've got some Spider-Man issues in here. And this is 347. I want to say this is during that um, Eric Larson run after Todd McFarlane, before Bagley. And this is a real classic cover right here. I think this is mostly a cover. It's popular because of the cover. <clears throat> I want to say this is my personal issue. And if I remember when I was pressing this, I want to say that this one had some issues with the cover. So I'd be surprised if it gets a 9.8. I did my best to get everything out. But this is one of those ones that I might have even questioned whether it was going to get graded, to be honest with you. So let's see how we did. Yep, okay, there you go, 9.6. Since it was graded, that's kind of what I figured it was going to get, it was a 9.6. So, and moving forward, when you see this video, I'll put up some graphics. I'll go back and I'll double check what the current fair market value is for everything right now. And uh, so you can see what, at least as a posting when this video comes out, basically what it's worth and out there. Oh, wow, I'm actually surprised. This is the first book that I knocked off my list as one that was even going to get graded. It's Tarzan number one, the Marvel uh, edition. This is um, John uh, John Buscema artwork. I never had this issue growing up. I had some of the later issues. I love that. I think I think when it was like uh, Klaus Jansen was doing some of the inking, I want to say, but just some wonderful artwork. And I picked this up on whatnot for $1. That was $1 plus, I guess, $4, $5 shipping. But I thought it, it was like a really nice pickup for a dollar and I pressed it and cleaned it and I this was when I say take a shot on gold this was the book I was thinking of in particular shot on gold because I figured this book had no chance so let's just see what we did hey that's not too bad there's not a lot of value at a 9.6 I don't want to I want to say on this but a 9.8 would have been really nice but this isn't a super super book that everybody's clamoring for but you know it's a nice first appearance Tarzan and Marvel Comics there yeah yeah Roy Thomas wrote that but in the 70s practically if it wasn't uh, Jerry Conway or Steve Englehart it, it was definitely Roy Thomas writing just about everything wasn't he seems like it all right oh good I I'm hoping for something good on this one because I think I've got two issues in here. I don't know if both of them got graded or not. And I'm going to see if I can not get that in the light. This is Ghost Rider number 28. The first appearance uh, cameo? I'm not sure. But it's basically the beginning of the Midnight Sun storyline. So it's a key in that terms of that. I don't think they're called the Midnight Suns. Maybe it's cameo. I'd have to go back and read this. You got, uh, um, I think the Cubert's all worked on the artwork here or at least a couple of them joe i think and then um i'm not sure if both of them uh, both the sons did i don't i don't know we'll, we'll look at the the spec on this or the information up here but both of these both issues i pulled out of the poly bag and i tried to pay a lot of attention to the cover to make sure that there was no line or anything when i was pressing this so let's see how we did on this one nice yeah there we go there we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's really beautiful. Yeah, it's Andy Kubert and Joe Kubert on the cover here. Howard Mackey story. Holly bag removed. That is awesome. Yes. 
Now we'll see. There's not, not too many books left there. I just reached down and like, hmm, it's gonna be a small order. But as I said, I didn't want them graded if it went down below this. Okay, here's the second copy of this. Let's see if we can go two for two, or did we get a nine six on this one? All right, awesome. So this is really good because these are books that have been in my collection since they came out. Actually, I I can tell you this. I never read this. They were in the poly bag. I took both of them out. And I still didn't read it when I took it out. I was cleaning and pressing it and everything. So I know it was real popular at the time. Um, yeah, but it, these are books right here that I don't mind. I will not mind selling this because it's not a key in my collection and everything. But this... Definitely, there are fans out there of this book. I've got a 9-8 available, guys. i got two of them. If you're interested, just always reach out to me, collectorauctions at yahoo.com. But that's real nice. Get 9-8s on both of those. I was worried about the poly bag because I've had mixed results on that. I But I'm beginning to think it wasn't me. I'm thinking it's definitely the grading. Uh, I'm thinking of X-Force number one in particular. I haven't had the great success with that one. Oh! Okay, we got Secret Wars number two, uh, issue number three. And this, I want to say this is the first appearance of the Beyonder. Actually, you see him. I I want to say, I'll, I'll read up here to notice what he says exactly. And I think I've got at least three, I think I've got three copies of this in here. And this has become real popular recently. Um, we'll see. We everybody feels like they're getting ready to do Secret Wars in, in at Marvel. We'll see how much they include of the Beyonder. But right now, that's this is a kind of a, a key first appearance, even if you don't like the artwork. So let's see how we did on this one. Awesome, awesome. Got a nine eight on at least one of these. So that is awesome. All right. Let's see if the other one's made it through or not. Yep, I got one more that made it through. So at least a 9.6. Let's see if we went two for two. Ah, oh, we got a 9.6 on that. Okay, okay. So, you know, 9.6 right there. That's definitely something that uh, either one of them would be desirable by collectors. That is still really nice. And the unfortunate thing with CGC is that I'm probably not going to have greater notes on anything in here. And they're not going to tell me what did I miss. If I can't see it on the cover through the plexiglass here, I'll never really know what knocked it down. And that's kind of frustrating. Uh, I went on a rant in my last video, or one of my last videos, where I talked about we pay all this money to CGC and the other grading companies. I think we should have complete notes on what they do on the book. I, th I think that should be a right. You pay for this. You should know. I mean, when you go to the garage and you have all this work done, they give you a write-up and tell you what, what was going on. I mean, CGC can could at least do that, or any of these grading companies could at least do that. Um, I mean, one of those orders, one of my previous videos where I had all these Fantastic Four in there, I had a range all the way from a 9.4 down to a 7.0, and the few issues that I actually had that had greater notes, they were practically the same. From a 9.4 down to a 7.0, it was practically the same greater notes. It told me nothing. All right, we got Marvel Comics Presents number 76. You guys know how much I love the Barry Windsor Smith Weapon X origin of Wolverine. Um... I think this is the first time I've sent this particular issue in. I've sent, I've sent 72 in a couple times. I got a 9.6. I got a 9.8 on one of those. I want to say issue 84. I've gotten 9.4s and 9.6s. I, I don't think I've got any 9.8s on the rest of the series yet. I do have some more raw that I'm working on, and eventually I'll try to send them in. This would be nice. But you got to get 9.8s on the uh, 73 through 73 through 84. You got to get a nine eight to have any real value, and I, I always thought felt like nine six on these would still be okay. There's a little bit in this, but this is probably one of those that this is one that would drop off. If I get a nine six on this, the value is really going to drop off. And I, again, I'll put it up on the screen, but let's just see how we did. Dang nabbit! 
and I'm only frustrated because I think I've done a really good job on these these Marvel Comics Presents issues, uh, specifically these Weapon X ones, and I'm just, I, yeah, I don't know. I just cannot pull nine eights on this. Luckily, like I said, I pulled a nine eight on issue number 72, and that's the one you really want to get that nine eight on. I mean, that's a nice, valuable book. All right, let's see what else we got here. Oh, like I said, we did some more Spider-Man issues. This is issue number 360, and I want to say this is the first cameo of Carnage. So there's a little bit of value to that because of this. Of course, 361 is the first full appearance, and then that book recently has just been dropping. Ever since the movie, that book has actually... I, I heard at one point that the value of the book has actually gone down below what it was before the movie even was being talked about. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's really dropped down. But let's just see how we did on this one. All right. Nine, eight. Awesome. Yeah, I was taking really good care of the books at this time. The only issue that I was having, and it, it, I only discovered it after I started pulling the books out of the collection and trying to look for some of these keys when I was getting involved with CGC for the very first time, was, yes, I bagged and boarded everything. Yes, they were in nice long boxes and they were protected. Problem was, I the bags I used a uh, a drafting tape to close the bags, and that little bit of thickness on the tape, actually on the back of, of that, kind of ended up being about this spot. So, and I didn't um, at the time. I just had every comic in there, um, you know, face the same way. So the back of the board, the comic right in front of it would have be right against this. And it left an impression on a lot of the comics, just that little bit of pressure having the comics in there so tight that there's a little bit of an indent right across the masthead on just about every one of those comics. That's how the tape was a little thick, so it, it left that. Now, luckily, I, can, I learned how to clean and press, and that's probably the easiest press that I did was to get that out of these, these comics like that. But lesson learned, how to store your books. But we got a 9-8 on issue number 360. Let's see. First appearance of Carnage in Cameo. Nice. Nice. Okay. What we got left? Okay, so we're down to the last book. And as I said, this was not a highly successful order in terms of total number. And it was not... Yeah. Got a few nine eights in here that and hopefully something like that will help pay for this order. But let's see what the last one is. Oh, it's Spider-Man 333. Again, one of these classic Eric Larson covers here. You got, I want to say, isn't this like one of the not the McFarlane uh, Venom, but it's one of it's an early cover appearance here. Let's see if if how we did on that one. All right, so we got 9-8. Awesome, awesome. That's what I was kind of expecting on these. The, a lot of these are really good. But that's real nice. It's Really, there's no first appearance. It's not a key, but it is definitely... It's like one of those covers that's a real... It's a key because of the cover and how early of an appearance it is with uh, Venom here. So, yeah, that's real good. So, let's see how many we did. One, two, three, four, five, six... 13. 14. Yeah, it's a little lower than I thought. The box, I thought the weight, I, I honestly thought I'd get about 17 out of this. So that's a, that's a little bit disappointing. But hey, let's just get into the rolls and I'll show you what didn't make the grade. And again, on these cases like this, every book right here will be reevaluated. And I'll put it back through the system if I feel like if there's still value in there. Um, It is what it is. CGC has, um, I don't know. Like I said, they've been grading some books, some orders really good, and some they're being a little harsh. This one, I feel, feel like it's kind of in that middle ground. It's a little bit on the harsh side in terms of just getting things graded, but I did set that pre-screen for a 9.6. So uh, let's see, I had a copy of 334. That's, uh, I think it's the issue one of the Return of the Sinister Six. Yeah, this is the Return of the Sinister Six, part one. You got Eric Larson cover. I want to say Walt Simonson. No, I'm sorry. It was um, 
Terry Austin did the inking on the cover. I thought that was, I thought it was um, Walt Simonson. Oh, look, it's, I had two copies of that. Oh, and then I had a copy of Marvel Comics Presents number one. It's interesting that I got this one back not even as a 9.6. I literally got this in a few orders ago. I got a 9.8 on it. Fantastic. And I ended up selling it. And I it was a lesson learned on my part because I didn't look at it really, really well when I got it. Looked good. Flipped it over. Looks great. Okay, fine. Move on. And listed it. Took photos. And just didn't pay enough attention. But the back uh, corner up here, it had been on the back cover in this spot or around the spine actually it was just crunched and we'll see how it does because i ended up sending it back to them i talked to cgc customer server is really responsive to my request i basically said hey guys you great you sent this to me it was great at 98 which is great but one the case was cracked and then i took a look at the back cover and well, this is after I sold it too, because the seller is the one who caught it. I mean, obviously, when you get something like that, and you know, I would have never sold that if I had really done my job the first time and looked at it. And the monitor is going to sleep. There you go. So after he sent it back, I, I took a look at it and talked to CGC. They and I told him I took a photo of it, and it to me it looked like you could probably press it out. It didn't look like color. It was color breaking, but you could tell. When they put the book into the sleeve to put it into the case, they crunched it. And, or else it wouldn't have been greater than 9.8. It wasn't even close to a 9.8 at that point. But they're going to press it for me. I shouldn't get charged at all, and I'm just waiting for them to return that. All right. Oh, so one of my X-Men 256s didn't make it through. And here's one that I, when I put on my list, this was probably the second book I said was not going to make it through. This is issue... 166 of X-Men. There's a little bit of spec on that. And um, let's say, is this, was that the first appearance of Lockheed the Dragon? I can't remember now. Uh, one of the copies of Fantastic Four 276 didn't make the grade. One of the Secret Wars number three didn't make the grade. Now, this is disappointing. I thought this one was really good. It would at least be a 9.6. This is Emma Frost, number one. Got some of that really risque Greg Horn artwork there. I guess you'd call it risque. I don't know. And then the one copy of X-Men 207 didn't make it through. This got this classic. I'm sorry about the light there. Let me see if I can turn that a little bit. This is uh, classic John Romita Jr. artwork. And then these two were two of the ones I didn't think, beca because of the age, I didn't think would be a 9.6. I thought they would be gift grades, honestly. Um, and I'm not too disappointed in it. But Shot on Goal was Marvel 2-in-1. number. This is 55. George Perez artwork. I want to say John Byrne artwork on the interior. Uh, and then you've got two, uh, number 57. This is all part of that Project Pegasus um, issues that I had been picking up. I didn't pay a lot of money for these. And again, shots on goal. I am kind of trying to get the Project Pegasus issues all graded, high grade, 9.6s, 9.8s. And so far, I, I've got the two big issues. That's the first one, 53 with Quasar and number 54 with Deathlock. And I've got a 9.8 on the Quasar. I got a 9.4, excuse me, a 9.6 on the the issue number 54. So I thought I could at least get nine sixes out of both of these. And obviously they didn't feel like it, uh, it would. I don't know if this is ones I will actually put back through the system again. It really wasn't going to be worth a lot. And a nine six are really not really worth it, but I took a shot. Um, anyway, took a shot. So anyway, guys, that's it. That's, that's the order. Uh, do me a favor, take a look at this right here. Tell me, what do you think of how I'm handling the situation with these pre-screens? I'm pretty okay with it right now because, as I said, I don't want these books graded if it goes below um, a good return on investment um, value. And 9.6, they still have some good value. At a 9.8, they're a lot, obviously a lot better. At a 9.4, it almost isn't worth getting them graded. And 
That's why I set the, the pre-screen. Maybe I'm a little disappointed that I got so many 9.6s this time, but we got a handful of 9.8s. Can't complain about that. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and stay tuned. I'll probably have another one in a couple more days. I literally have these orders from CGC are just coming back lightning fast. I've got one coming in. Literally, this is, uh, like I said, July 1st when I open this. Tomorrow, July 2nd, I'm literally going to have another order coming in. And um, I think there'll be a, several next week as well. So it's going to be some big times. I'm almost caught up with all my orders, at least the ones I've sent in. I think I've got a couple more at CCS right now. So I've kind of held back sending in new orders just because I've got so many in the system. And I've also got some, uh, some of the orders that I've sent to um, have signatures. Well, I'm having a couple books to the uh, Jim Lee signing in-house there. I think I've got a book in there for that John Romita Jr. signed for me at, at Heroes Con that I sent in that I want to get uh, uh, Bob Layton to sign as well. So there's a couple of those orders like that that I that I submitted during the one at the Heroes Con down in Charlotte uh, a week ago. So those orders are coming in, but any of these big pre-screen 25 book orders right now, I've I've just kind of held back a little bit, and we'll we'll wait. We'll get some of these other orders in. Uh, I do need to sell some of these books to help pay for all these CGC unboxings. As much fun as these are, it's pretty expensive. So we gotta you gotta pay for the hobby at some point. So. Uh, and again, if you see any books in here you like, just reach out to me and I'll be glad to uh, talk to you about them. So guys, take care and I will see you then for the next video.